To install the connector on your Rialto Reformer, you're going to need a drill bit and two Allen wrenches that come with your kit, a 7 16 combination wrench, um, or a 7 16 socket, which makes it a little bit easier, something sharp to open the packaging, a screwdriver, doesn't matter if it's Phillips or flathead, and a power drill with a Phillips um, bit. Hi, my name is Kayleen and I'm the Pilates mechanic here in the BB garage. Today I'm going to show you how to install a connector on your Rialto reformer. So I'm going to unpack this box, take all the parts out, um, and then we'll go through how to assemble the parts onto your reformer and then how to use the reform or sorry, the connector safely. Okay? So let's see what's in this box here. We've got some mm, double padded loops with the tri-loop. Those are gray. These ones are black and they also have pulleys on them. I've got a rope and I've got this big piece here. This is a new riser tower for the end of your reformer. It's got more threaded holes in it. Okay. And then in the bottom here we've got a little bag with some tools, a drill bit, some hardware, and a drilling template. This is important because we will have to drill some holes. New shoulder rest posts. Uh, I think there are two of these. Yep. Two brackets with pulleys that go under your carriage. A second set of pulleys. Well, I shouldn't say second set. There are a lot of pulleys here. This particular set will go on the holes we have to drill. And then new shoulder rest brackets, okay? So we got to install all this stuff. We're going to start with the shoulder rest brackets. Um, so I'm going to pull those parts out that we need for that and put everything else off to the side. So I've got the two shoulder rest brackets and the flanged shoulder rest posts and then the little bag with hardware. I'm going to take everything else. We'll start by taking the ropes off. We aren't going to need the ropes or the loops anymore. So I'm gonna put those off to the side. Um, and they, I might store them somewhere in case you ever want to convert back, um, but you won't need them, need them to use the reformer once you have the connector installed. Okay. Now, Let's take your shoulder rests off, okay? So let's loosen your knobs here. And they should just pop off like that. Okay. And our goal is to replace these gray brackets with new gray brackets. The new gray back brackets will have two extra holes in them so that we can fit new posts on. To do that, I need to find a little Allen wrench in my bag of tools. Okay. So I think this one is it. Yep, fits right in there. Okay, so before I actually take those off, I'm going to get my new shoulder rest brackets out and ready. Okay, so just for comparison's sake, these are our new brackets. They've got the same pattern of four holes to attach to the shoulder rest. They just have two extra holes here. 
All right. Let's take these off. I'm gonna use my Allen wrench and go lefty loosey. Now, I've removed this shoulder bracket, but before I actually take it off and put it off to the side, because we won't need it anymore, I want to notice that the, sh the holes that are showing on the shoulder rest are to the right, so that when I install the new shoulder rest bracket on the same shoulder rest, it's in the same spot, okay? And if I take this bracket away, you may be able to see a little indentation in the shoulder rest, okay? So old bracket goes off to the side, new bracket comes back on, and I'm going to line it up with the same holes as before. And we can take our screws and put them back in and tighten them up. Okay, so I've got the screws all tightened in here, and I want to stress that I tighten them enough so that I could start to see the shoulder rest material bulge, but I didn't tighten them so far that the screws stopped or bottomed out. So make sure they're secure. This isn't going to come apart, um, but you don't need to go so hard that um, you feel a definite end to the stop of the screws. Okay, so let's do the same thing on the other shoulder rest. Okay, our check here is that if you line these two shoulder rests up next to each other, these showing holes on the black material should be right next to each other, okay? Or exactly opposite of each other. All right, so now we've done that, we're going to screw in to these holes here. Okay, so that you can see that in this shoulder rest bracket, there are two holes that are threaded. We're going to attach the shoulder posts to these holes. So we need our shoulder rest posts. These are special because they have flanges at the top here and that's to prevent your straps from sliding off. And then we'll need these short screws from in your bag. So these are pretty small. Okay. I've got four of them here. And then you'll need the other Allen wrench to install them. So <clears throat> your shoulder rest are going to sort of be an overhang on the bracket. Okay. So the holes will line up and you'll still have the hole here to secure the shoulder rest to the carriage. So let's take our little short flathead screws and using the Allen wrench, secure our shoulder post, whoops, our shoulder post to the, the shoulder rest bracket, okay? Whoops, butterfingers today. Now these screws need to be snug, 
and they will hit a certain stopping point. Okay. All right, I'm going to do the same thing on the next bracket. Okay, when you're done, your two new shoulder rests should look just like this, okay? They've got, now they've got posts on them. They will fit easily back on your carriage, just like they did before, but we need to leave them off to install the parts underneath the carriage. So we're gonna put them off to the side for the moment, um, and I'm going to flip the carriage over so that we can install the pulley brackets underneath, okay? Let's unhook a spring. And then when I flip this carriage, I'm going to be very careful to make sure that the upholstery is what's touching the frame so that I don't scratch anything, okay? Now for this next part, I need pulley brackets. I need some screws from our little hardware bag and my power drill. Okay, I'm gonna bring my little stool. We are going to remove these four screws here with your drill. And I've got a Phillips head here. We need to save this, these four screws but we can get rid of this little metal plate here. We don't need that anymore. We're going to replace that metal plate with a new bracket with a pulley attached. Now we're going to align the bracket onto those four holes and reinsert these four screws, okay? So they'll go right into the existing holes. Okay. We're also going to add two new screws, one here and the other one on the other side here. Oops, right here. Um, they do not have pre-drilled holes, so let's grab two of these wood screws out of your bag of hardware. Um, and we'll have to drill into this. So when you're drilling here, just be careful that you don't press too hard without supporting underneath the carriage so that you don't tip the carriage off of the frame. There we go. There's one. And there's two. Okay, let's do the same sequence on the other side. and then send these existing screws into the existing holes here. Now I've got my two new screws. I'm going to drill them into these holes that do not have pre-drilled holes in the wood underneath. There we go. So now our brackets with the pulleys are done and we're ready to flip the carriage back over install the shoulder rests, and move up to the pulley risers. All right, let's go. Okay, let's get all of our old hardware out of the way. I don't wanna lose this existing stuff. I'm gonna hook a couple springs on to the spring bar just to keep things still. And then we can put our shoulder rests back in place. And this time we'll be able to secure them with our threaded knobs. Okay, it's time to move up here. To start, we're going to remove these pulleys because we'll need to put them on a new riser tower. Um, 
and then we'll have to drill some holes. So to remove the pulleys, I need a screwdriver. Doesn't matter what kind. And I'm going to go lefty loosey. And then I can use my fingers to take these out. Now when I take these out, I'm going to make sure to save both the washer, the flat washer and the finish washer. So don't lose any of the little hardware that's on the eye bolt. Okay, we'll put these off to the side so I can use it later. All right. Now we've got the pulleys removed. Let's find our Allen wrench so we can loosen our set screws here in the corner and remove this tower and put it, put it away. Let's see, where did I put my Allen wrench? Oh, I think this is it. Lefty Lucy. You do not need to pull this screw all the way out. It just needs to be loose a turn or two so that this will slide right out. Maybe I need to go a little bit more here. There we go. Okay, now we've got that out of the way, it's time to drill our holes here in the wood. And the reason we need to drill holes is so that we can mount two pulleys here on the inside of the frame. So in your packet, or your little bag of hardware, there's a drill bit and a drilling template. I want to get both of those out. I also need to gather my pencil and my drill. Let's mark where you're going to drill first. So you've got this uh, wood template here. It's got a hole in it. We're going to line up two of these edges with your reformer like this. Okay, line up the bottom edge with the bottom edge of the frame and the side edge with this gray leg piece. Then you'll hold it in place, take your pencil and mark a little circle. Okay, we're going to flip this square template over and do the same thing on the opposite side here, holding it in place and marking a circle, okay? So that's how I know where I'm going to drill my holes. They should look symmetric, so if they aren't, double check the placement of your template, okay? Now, I'm going to drill with this drill bit that has included with the kit. There are a couple ways you can do this, a couple tricks of the trade. Um, Sometimes I like to drill a pilot hole first with like an eighth inch drill bit because that's a little bit easier to control and it will make guiding this thicker drill bit much easier. Um, we can also hold a paperback book or a piece of wood on the back here if you're worried about um, uh, splinters or shards of wood coming out when you burst through the other side. I'm gonna go really slow and I'm gonna go straight with this included drill bit um, and we should be good to go, okay? pretty good. All right. So I managed to do that without making any big splinters. Cool. Okay. So we're done with the drill. Now we need to find our other little bag of pulleys, not the ones that we just took off because we'll need those for something else. We should have another bag of pulleys. 
here they are, in our parts, okay? We should have a pulley with a long eye bolt and some hardware, and not all of the hardware will always be on here, so I'll walk you through what you need. Um, we're going to take off everything from the eye bolt except for one hex nut and one flat washer. Okay, so you should be left with something that looks like that. And you want to make sure that your hex nut is tightened all the way close to the eye bolt side, that it's not somewhere in the middle of the threads. This assembly is then going to go into the hole here that we just drilled. And then on the back side, we'll secure it with a flat washer, a nylock nut, and an acorn nut. Okay. So flat washer and the nylock nut. We'll need a, um, a socket wrench here on the back. And then I'm going to hold the front with a screwdriver to make sure it doesn't twist. Okay, so our nylock nut is on, and then I'll take the um, acorn nut and place it on top. And then you can use your socket or you can use a combination wrench to tighten the acorn onto the nylock. Okay, you saw that my eye bolt moved a little bit, so I'm just gonna give it a little tug back to the center and hold it there. Cool, okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna verify that I have the right hardware. You can see on this eye bolt here, I'm missing a flat washer. So I'm going to add a flat washer to this spot. There we go. So now I've got a hex nut and a flat washer. It's going to go through the hole. On the back side, I put my washer and the nylock nut. I use my screwdriver and a socket to tighten the nylock down. I'm choosing to keep my eye bolts vertical, but you can put them at whatever direction you want. And then again, I'll use my socket to tighten down the acorn. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our two pulleys secure. We are ready to install our new riser tower, add the pulleys on that we took off of the old riser pulley tower. That's a lot of words. Um, and then we can move on to threading the ropes. So let me go grab the new tower. So your tower should have these two pulleys installed. I'm going to remove this packaging. Okay. And then this will slide into the holes at the end of your frame and rest on the stoppers there. Make sure that the pulleys are facing the carriage. Now using our Allen wrench, we're gonna tighten down the set screws here in the corner. Okay. And they should be snug, but not overly tight. There we go, this isn't going anywhere. And then finally up here, we need to install our older pulleys, the existing pulleys into these two holes here. So I'm gonna grab those. And again, we're making sure that we have got a flat washer, which is tucked up in here. I'm gonna pull it out so you can see. Or, or maybe I'm not. It's tucked up in here pretty well. There is a flat washer and a finish washer in here, okay? 
Oh, you can see it on this other one here. Okay, so there's two washers here, and those need to go on. We'll hand tighten till we can't, and then use a screwdriver to secure. There we go. And last one. There we go. That should be good. Okay. Now we are ready to install the ropes and talk about how to use the connector safely. Okay. To thread the rope, we need the ropes and the pair of loops that have the pulleys on them, okay? So I'm just gonna put these here for the moment while we do the first part of threading your rope. I'm just gonna let this rest here in the middle. Take one end of the rope and thread it through both pulleys under the carriage. So now we've got two ends of rope coming out, okay? Once I've done that, I can take these loops these are the ones with the black tri-loop, and they've got a pulley attached. Those are just going to fit over the shoulder rests here. Okay. Now, with this loose end of the rope I've got here, I'm going down to the bottom pulley, and then I'm going up through the inside pulley. Okay. From here, I come back towards the carriage, and now I'm going to loop through the pulley on the loop on this side. And then I go back to the carriage. Sorry, this isn't the carriage. This is the riser. Um, and then go through the unused outside pulley here. And then I'm going to come back to the carriage now, for real, and loop the rope around the post. Okay. So I'm going to repeat that process with the other loose end of the rope. So I've got the rope coming out from under the carriage, taking the loose end, going through the bottom pulley, coming up through the inside top pulley, coming back towards the carriage and going through the pulley that's attached to the loop, coming back towards the risers, going through the outside pulley, and then coming back to the carriage. And I can loop around the... Um, post here. Okay. These look a little bit long because I'm currently in the second gear position. But if you were to do this with the carriage in the first gear position, um, the ropes might look a little bit different as far as how much slack they have. Okay. So now I've got the ropes here. I can attach the gray loops um, with a soft touch connection. So I've got these. Notice they've got the gray tri-loop. Here is our soft touch connection, okay? We take the loop of the rope and you go through the metal D-ring and then you take the loop, the gray loop, and go through the loop of the rope. Slide it down. And then we've got our connection, okay? And that can rest just there. Let's do the same thing on the other side, taking the loop on the rope through the metal D-ring, taking the actual loop through the rope, sliding it down. Good. And then we've got our connection here. Okay. All right. So, as of right now, the connector is ready to use. I want to give you a few tips before we end this video, just so that you get off on the right foot here. Um, first thing to note, these all four of these loops have this awesome feature called a tri-loop. And right now you can see it's gray here. Um, the black ones also have that. And this is just an easily 
It easily converts into a Y loop, so you get some support for your heel or your wrist. So it just folds out just like this, and then you can easily fold it back when you're not using it. The gray loops also have this Velcro here if you need to accommodate, sorry, accommodate smaller feet. Um, now, as far as weight of these ropes go, we've got four sets of loops. If you want the regular weight of the reformer, as if you weren't using a connector, and you're only using two straps, you put the gray loops on the posts, and you use the black loops, okay? These are gonna look most like, or sorry, they're gonna feel most like a regular reformer. Um, the gray loops are, if you only use those, they're much lighter. Um, whenever you're only using two loops, the unused loops have to go on this shoulder post because it's got the flange on the top, so that keeps them from sliding up and off, okay? Um, sometimes you'll see the ropes will get a little bit twisted, so just be sure that you can use common sense when twisting and untwisting and moving these straps all around. Um, now, if you wanted to use the connector, like a regular reformer, where there's no um, give-take between sides, so you want to lock the ropes down, you can easily do that. Now, it requires you to reach down to the rope that comes out from under the carriage and pull it up and then loop it through the cam cleat, okay? And then give that cam cleat a tug here. So now you're gonna move the carriage and your limbs aren't going to be dependent on one another. So it'll be just like a regular reformer. And then when you're ready to be done with that, you just unhook it and let it go. All right, I think that covers everything. You're ready to use your connector. Um, we're good to go. If you need more videos like this one, you can check them out at pilates.com slash bbgarage. I'll see you over there.